Hello, hello. So we'll get started in just a few minutes and talk about like the difference between Facebook, your like how you use your personal profile, your um, Facebook groups, Facebook business pages, events, like it can all be really confusing. So I'm going to talk about that today and I'm not in front of my window today so my lighting isn't great, sorry. <laughs> That's why I normally sit in front of my windows. But I was at the laptop today. I have been sitting here since 9 a.m. It's 1 o'clock now, and I've accomplished precisely nothing. So I don't know how that happened, and I don't know how it's only Tuesday. It feels like Thursday. <laughs> we have a long way to go. Oh, okay, so I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, and um, we'll get started at 3 after like we usually do to give everybody a chance to join. Hello, one more minute and we'll get started. Okay, so Let's talk Facebook tools because um, Facebook is tricky and it has a lot of different avenues that you can go to market your business. So there's like your Facebook personal page, like your own personal profile, and then there's your group you created. Like, you know, I call it a VIP group. And just so everybody's on the same page about my terminology, you are in my VIP group and you are considered a VIP if you have lips and are a female. So those are my VIPs and I don't really have any other, you know, thoughts on, you know, making things exclusive and having additional groups for just people who have purchased from you or your, you know, your really regular customers and things like that. I do lots of good customer service for my existing customers and I contact them and I um, keep them up to date on what's going on in my business and I do nice little fun things for them when I send them packages and things like that. So I do take care of my really loyal customers but everybody is a VIP. Um, anybody, there's lots of people in my group that are distributors. There's lots of people who were my customers and are distributors. There are lots of people in my group who signed up under somebody who signed up under me that are in my group. So that's just my VIP group. And it's, I don't know, maybe about 500 people at this point. It's not enormous. Mm -hmm. So that's my VIP group. And then there's also what's called a Facebook business page. Um, if you're not familiar mm -hmm. with Facebook business page, they are really designed for businesses. So you create a page, it's completely public. Everything you post there is public. Um, people can find your posts just by searching um, your business name in Facebook and they can go out to your page and see what's going on there. And they can, um, and the thing about business pages is because it's a business page and because you're using it to advertise and market your business, a lot of times, um, really people are not going to see the content that you post on that page unless you pay Facebook to boost your ads. 
So um, I don't use mine a whole lot for that purpose because I don't want to pay a ton of money to be advertising when it's just as effective for me to be working in my VIP group and get pretty good engagement and things like that. But I'm going to tell you about why I do have a business page, why I do think they're valuable mm -hmm. and something you can kind of work your way into. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is Facebook events. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with events. I kind of tend to use my events like one way. Um, and I'll tell you why. So the first thing is your personal profile. I personally think it's really important for you to post on your Facebook profile, but not to over post on your Facebook profile. So what I mean by that is kind of following the, the laws of social media, which you may have heard me talk about 911 and CPR before. So on your personal profile, for me, it's like 91. Um, there's no additional one. Nine posts are about you. They're about your life. They're about your opinions. They're about your kids. There are things that are going to drive interaction and engagement with the people that you want to be connected with in your life like using it very naturally to share your life with others, um, which is really the point of social media is to form relationships and connections with people that you don't get to regularly interact with and to share more information with them kind of about who you are. So even when you're like reposting something you find funny, you're sharing something about yourself with them. You're sharing your sense of humor with them and that gives them insight into your life. So um, that's really the point of social media. So when you are posting things to your personal profile, the goal of that is to enjoy your social media. Like I enjoy sharing things about my life. I enjoy making people laugh. I enjoy pumping people up. I love, um, I love it when people are inspired by things that I've posted. And all of those things are kind of like in the overall like scheme of my business are like money in the bank. So you have kind of a social media currency, it's like a bank account. And when you make people feel good, when you help them feel connected with you, when you deepen a relationship with somebody, that's all money into the bank. When you solicit people, when you try to sell them something, when you're introducing product to them, that's money out of the bank. There's nothing wrong with doing those things. We're all, a lot of us are using social media very effectively to run our businesses. Our friends and family don't mind. They love it, they love supporting us, but it's because we've got enough money in the bank built up where if I've got a hundred posts of things that made people feel good and connected with me and that we have a great relationship, they wanna see me succeed, they wanna see me happy, and then I take a dollar or two out to um, engage with them on a business level that I've still got plenty of currency left there and my overall relationship with them is positive. So what I really struggle with seeing is people who don't post about their business at all on their Facebook page. I think you're doing a real disservice to your friends and family. Um, those are people that care about you. They're your friends and family for a reason. They want to support your business. I think that cutting them off from that aspect of your life is, um, is not a great way to do business, first of all. But I, it, it seems kind of disingenuous, you know what I mean? Like you've chosen to do this and it's part of your life and I think you should share that with people. Um, you know, certainly not that you don't have any semblance of privacy or anything, but I think people get caught up in their head and think, well, I don't want to talk about this on my personal page because I don't want people to feel annoyed or bugged by me. They won't as long as you've got enough money in the bank. And so when you're working with your personal profile, the real focus of your personal profile is forming deep connections with people, and then occasionally posting about your business to give them the opportunity to know what's going on with you and support it if they want to. So um, the other thing that I see is on the opposite spectrum of not posting ever about your business is posting way too much. Um, no matter how much they love you, if all you post about is your business, they're going to unfollow you because there is not value in that relationship. Like, I love you, Leslie. I wanna see what's going on in your life. I adore you, but all you post about is it works. There is no value in there for me. Um, and I use that as an example because I recently unfollowed a relatively good friend of mine because honest to goodness, every post about, every post she had tied back to it works. It was a clear solicitation. So why, even though she was sharing things about her life, like 
got to take my son to the park today in the middle of the day because I'm not working at the restaurant anymore. That's great. But everything is, and here's my Plexus distributor ID, every single post. So even when she's sharing things about her life, it was like, okay, I've had enough. And I unfollowed her and I feel bad about it and I hate it, but I'm not bad enough to go back and follow her again. So I just want everybody to kind of be aware that there's a happy medium. And if you need kind of a formula in your mind, just to know what that balance is, it's really like the first part of 911. It's just like nine and one. And when you have the opportunity to tie something very natural about your business into your life, I mean, honestly, all of my friends and family know I do this full time. They knew they do this every day. They know that I travel. They know that Lily goes to all of this stuff with me. So a lot of it, like I just can't leave it out. Um, but I don't, I'm very careful not to be like, oh, this amazing thing happened. Um, here's how, how you sign up. Here's my distributor ID. Here's the link to my website. So I have to kind of share about my business a lot more than I think somebody who's just starting out will, um, because it's totally taken over my life. Um, but I think that there's like a balance there and how much you are working your business is probably going to end up kind of being reflected in your social media accounts. So natural, genuine, add money to your bank account by um, ensuring that when you're posting to your personal page that you really are forming connections with people. So I have a challenge whenever I'm talking about social media for everybody to do is to go to your personal page, go back through your last 30 posts and ask yourself a few questions. How many are business related? How many received engagement? Like how many people really commented on what I posted? How many people liked what I posted? How many people shared what I posted? Um, how often do I share myself with people? Um, am, am I just sharing other people's content? Like, am I just reposting funny memes all the time? Or am I actually creating posts that reflect who I am, who, you know, that allow people to form a connection with me and form a relationship with me? Um, ask yourself if you're complaining a lot on Facebook. That takes money out of the bank every single time. Even if people agree with your political opinions or your, your opinions on current events or any of those things, if you're a person who's very negative on Facebook and you're ranting all the time and you're angry all the time, it's just money out of the bank. People don't want to hear it. When people look at their social media accounts, for the most part, they want to feel good. Like, I didn't stop to look at my Facebook account because I wanted to feel bad. I was interested in what's going on in the world, so I checked it out, and the posts that most people find valuable make them feel good, make them laugh, make them feel genuinely connected to you, and anything, even if, even if they agree with your angry rant, it didn't make them feel good. And if you do that a lot, people will just feel inundated by negative negativity, and they will stop liking and commenting, and then they're gonna stop seeing your posts. So I'm going to talk about that in a second and how you can ensure that people continue to see your posts. So my challenge for anybody who's interested in understanding their own social media is to go to your social media account, to your Facebook profile, look at your last 30 posts and try to categorize them a little bit. Where are the posts where I you know, formed a relationship? Where are the posts where I talked about my business? Where are the posts where I received a lot of engagement? lots of likes, shares, things like that, and try to understand what's successful for you. So um, what that leads me to is engagement and relevancy. So those are two terms that are really important in Facebook algorithm land. So engagement means that when I post something, I end up with a lot of commentary um, because over time, people have commented on my posts because there's just something engaging about the way I create posts. It's generally because I'm soliciting opinions from people genuinely, or I'm sharing something funny that happened to me and they want to share something back that happened to them, or they want to commiserate what happened with me. Um, so I get a lot of engagement on my posts. Well, because I get a lot of engagement on my posts, Facebook says, oh, what Kristen says is interesting. So it shows my posts to a lot of people. If you are creating posts, that don't receive comments and likes and shares and things like that, then Facebook is like, oh, people are not interested in what Jane has to say. So we're not gonna show that to many people because Facebook is a business. 
Facebook wants to give its customers what they want. And the way Facebook determines what its customers want is by what they like and comment on. So um, the other problem with posting about your business too much is that people are trained not to respond to solicitations. We just are. You know how you like scroll through your Facebook feed and you see the cutest bathing suit on the planet? And you're like, man, I think I might buy that. Do you like the post? Do you comment on the post? No, you don't. You don't do any of that. We don't respond to ads. We're just trained not to. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way we are. I don't respond to ads. You probably don't respond to ads. So the trouble with posting too much about your business is because people won't respond to you. They won't like, they won't comment. And it's not because they aren't interested in your business. It's because we're just trained not to respond to solicitations. So the trouble with that is they're not liking and commenting on your stuff. Well, Facebook thinks that they're not interested in your stuff. So they're going to stop showing your post to that person um, or persons like lots of persons. If nobody is liking and commenting on what you've posted. So that is going to drive your engagement scores way down. If you over solicit your friends and family, because people just stop seeing your post. It's not that they aren't interested. So honestly, if you've been kind of like over soliciting a little bit, don't take it personally, like your friends don't like you or they're annoyed with you or they're any of that. Um, that's possible, but the, the more likely thing is that because they weren't liking and commenting on your posts, they've stopped seeing them. They don't even know you're posting anymore. They have no idea. Um, so don't, feel bad or like take it personally if you're not receiving likes and, and comments anymore, people probably just aren't seeing what you're posting. Okay, so that's engagement. Engagement is how many people am, am I drawing in with my posts? Because if I post something and like three people comment on it, Facebook may show it to a few more people. If I post something and immediately 20 people comment on it, it may show it to another hundred. And then a few more people comment and then it shows it to another hundred. I've had posts where I have 800 friends and I've posted a video with 600 views because I got a lot of comments and then it showed it to more people, more comments shows it to more people. It just keeps growing until it reaches all of your friends eventually. Um, if people keep commenting on it. So that's engagement. The other thing is relevancy, and this is on an individual level with people that you are connected with. So say Jane and I are friends from high school, and um, I never comment on her stuff. She never comments on my stuff. She's not going to see my stuff. So then when I run into Jane at the supermarket, and she's like, oh my God, what are you doing these days? And I'm like, girl, I have a lipstick empire. And she's like, oh my God, what's that? And I'm like, Girl, I post about it every day. How did you miss that? We're on Facebook together. It's because she's not seeing my posts. We're not relevant to each other in Facebook size. So um, that leads us to, so there's 911. On your personal profile, it's really just kind of like 91. But then the other thing is CPR, comment, post, reply. For you to remain relevant with these people, y'all have to be commenting on each other's posts and replying to each other. So when you make a post, and people come in and they comment on it, you gotta reply to those people. First of all, because it creates relevancy between you and them. And then second of all, because that is how you carry on a conversation. <laughs> like this is a basic social skill. If somebody says something to you, you need to respond to them or they're going to stop talking to you. So it's really important when you make a post to draw an engagement and then people engage with you and comment that you respond to them. Um, I can't say that I respond to every single comment on every single post. It kind of depends on what their content is. If it was like 80 comments and 78 of them were yes, and then two of them were like full on stories or sentences, I will respond to those two and maybe not, and maybe just make blanket like, oh my gosh, thank you, but not respond to every single person on there. Um, but if somebody shares something about themselves with you, like they share a story with you, they write out a full sentence and ask you a question, you have got to respond to that. So the other thing is you also need to be going out to their posts and commenting on them. So not only when you, you know, when they respond to you, are you going to engage with them, but you need to be looking at other people's Facebook feeds and responding to them. So I'm going to caution you a little bit as your business grows, not to let your feed get completely overwhelmed with lip sense. I think it is great to be in a lot of groups. I think it's great to have a lot of information. 
I do not think it's great to have 98% of the posts from other LipSense distributors because then you are interacting with LipSense distributors all the time. You're seeing their post, they're seeing your post. Where did your customers go? You're not engaging with them anymore. They're not seeing your stuff. You're not seeing their stuff. Like all of a sudden these relationships that are critical to driving your business forward and frankly, maintaining your sanity, they're going to disappear because you're talking to all these LipSense girls. So evaluate your feed. Um, don't leave groups. You can just, you know, like unfollow them. So you can pop in there on occasion and take a look at it. Maybe even once a day you want to go look at it. But I'm going to be really honest in that I have unfollowed most groups besides like my own. And like maybe I'll only go look at Pearl Junkie when Jada posts there. Like that's the only time I go look at Pearl Junkie. They're not in my feed anymore. I go look when Jada posts. I go look when Dawn posts in Dawn's group. So I don't, I don't see all of that other stuff. And then the other thing is, and please nobody take this personally, but I have unfollowed most distributors in my newsfeed as well, besides people that I had an existing personal relationship prior, um, because of the fact that there's 1200 girls in my downline, I can't follow all those people or else I will totally miss out on my family and friends um, and other potential customers and distributors and things like that. So I've had to go through and unfollow those folks. So just be mindful when you're looking through your Facebook feed. If it's like 99% lip sense girls, like it may be time to kind of unfollow them and then go back through your friends list and be like, man, I haven't talked to my homegirl Gina from high school and ages. I haven't seen a post from her in forever. Click on Gina. If she's still posting, Facebook thinks y'all don't like each other or they aren't interested in each other and go out and comment on some of her stuff. So unfollow LipSense distributors that you don't have an existing personal relationship with unless there's just something about them that super adds value. There are some leaders and there's some girlfriends they just post amazing things. And so I keep them in my feed because they are just like, they sing to my soul, right? But like, not everybody's going to do that. So keep, keep those gals. But if you don't have a relationship, if these people are just kind of like Facebook clutter, go ahead and unfollow them. Then go back through your friends list. And if you're seeing people there that you want to see that you aren't seeing anymore, go out to their profile and comment on their stuff, like their stuff, genuine comments, start up a conversation. The other thing you can do is I have actually um, found myself in a position where I'm not seeing somebody's stuff. I really think they'd like the product. I really think they'd be great at selling it. So I will actually send them a Facebook messenger message and just be like, hey girl, I haven't talked to you in forever. I was looking at your Facebook profile the other day. Your kids are beautiful. Like, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. I just wanted to see how you're doing. And just struck up a conversation. I actually didn't bring up my business unless they asked um, or it came up naturally. But the point of reaching out to them was not for me to start a conversation about lip sense. It was for me to start a conversation because I know you've noticed it. Say you get a ping from somebody out of the blue and y'all have a conversation and then you pull up your Facebook feed, something they posted, it'd be like the first thing you see. Because Facebook's like, oh, these people are relevant to each other. They want to see what each other are posting. So you can actually message somebody, you can comment on their stuff and say nothing about your business if you don't want to, because, um, you know, you do want to be careful about like randomly soliciting people. I heard from a guy from high school the other day and he, um, like literally this was not somebody I was close with in high school and he messaged me. He asked me how my family's doing. Um, clearly he has no idea about my family. My husband is in prison. That's probably not a question you're going to ask me if you're familiar with my life. So he was completely unfamiliar with my life. Hadn't taken even a look at my profile, asked me how I'm doing. And then asked me if I'm interested in a business opportunity. And I was like, really? You don't want to do that. That's terrible. <laughs> that was the worst. So don't do that. Um, if you're going to reach out to people because you want to rekindle a relationship, even if you think they would be interested in your lip sync stuff, I would say that you want to just stimulate a genuine conversation with them because as you're posting, they're going to see your stuff. You don't even have to like be that overt about it. Um, and I think that's important because it was a real turn off. So I was just like, yeah, I have a contract. I definitely can't be involved in any other MLMs. And then it was like, okay, great. Bye. <laughs> Terrible. Don't do that. Um, okay. So that's how you can become relevant again with people. So kind of clean out the lip sense distributors. If you have a lot of that going on, go back through your friends list, figure out whose posts you are not seeing, click on their profile, comment on some stuff, like some stuff, send them a PM. If you're, you know, a good enough friend for you to send a PM to, you'll become relevant again. 
And then as you're doing comment post reply to each other, then you're going to see each other's posts. And then when you make that lip sense post, your friend Jane is going to see it again. So that's great. That's a really good thing. So that's how I use my Facebook profile. I use it very authentically. I talk about my life. I let people get in on my life. I um, share myself a lot with them. I share my kiddo with them. They're my people. So then the next thing is your VIP group. And the 911 rule applies in your Facebook group as well. And um, the way I use my Facebook group is I have a beauty group. I don't have a lip sense group. Um, when you launch your business, it is the lip sense show during your launch party, you know, for the first three or five days or whatever, it's the percentage show for sure. But after your launch party, that's when you really want to start doing things that are um, more engaging for your customers in your group. Because like I said, People are trained not to respond to solicitations. So say I'm me and I'm looking through my notifications in Facebook and I see that Kristen has posted in Kristen's Kiss and Tell. Well, I know that Kristen only posts about lip sense in Kristen's Kiss and Tell and I don't think I need a new lip color today. Am I going to click on Kristen's post in Kristen's Kiss and Tell? No, of course not. I don't want any lipstick today. I don't need that. And it's an advertisement. I know that it's an advertisement. If I see that Kristen has posted in Kristen's Kiss and Tell and Kristen is borderline crazy and posts all kinds of funny things and asks my opinion all the time and has the best posts and we always talk about beauty topics that I'm interested in, am I going to click on Kristen's post? Yeah, because I want to see what Kristen's up to today. Kristen is a hot mess, and it's a fun hot mess, and I love talking about microblading, and I love hearing people's opinions about Botox, and I love hearing opinions about skirted swimsuits that float up in the pool and make you look like a dork, and like all of these things that I post about. So you are just way more likely to have people click on your posts when they think they might be interested in what you're posting about. So if you're only posting about your business in your business group, they're going to see that notification. They're going to scroll right past it. And they are not going to be seeing it in their newsfeed either because they haven't clicked on it. They haven't liked anything in your group in a while. They haven't commented on anything in your group in a while. So they're definitely not seeing it in their newsfeed either. So you're like, man, I've got 400 people in this group and I'm posting and nothing is happening. It's because nobody is seeing what you're posting. And even if you are, um, even if you are seeing like 47 people saw this post, they were probably just scanning past in their Facebook feed and, you know, flew past. Um, and if it's a solicitation, they're generally not going to respond to it anyways. A like or a comment uh, is, is rare on a true solicitation post. So in my group, I'm kind of like a 911 girl, like nine posts that generally don't have a whole lot to do with our products. I mean, I'm talking about every random topic under the sun because I'm genuinely interested in it. I treat it like... I just treat it like a girl's group. You know what I mean? I talk about all kinds of beauty, lifestyle, health, diet, funny things, anything that I think women would have an opinion on. I love to talk about in my group and I genuinely only post about things I'm interested in. I don't schedule posts. I don't plan posts. I don't sit down and figure out marketing genius or anything. When I'm going through my Facebook feed and I see the picture of the crazy bra and I'm like, there's no way that works. And then I posted into my group and I ended up getting more engagement talking about bras that month than I have talked about anything else. But then when I do post about my business, people see it because they click on it when they see the notification in their notification section. And then um, because Facebook knows that what, uh, that the people in my group are interested in what I have to say, they um, put it in people's news feeds as well. So a lot of people see my content when they're scrolling through their news feed because they frequently like and comment on things in my group. So um, I'm like nine posts about things that generally have nothing to do with the business. And then um, like one post that's an actual solicitation. So if y'all, I don't want to talk about my entire monthly VIP party thing, but most of y'all know my business model. And my business model is like three weeks out of the month that I am fun, fluffy, microblading, Botox, clothes, swimsuits, bras, whatever, like that's me. And then one week out of the month, I do my VIP party. And so mine may not be 911 on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis, but on an overall monthly basis, it kind of falls that way because I end up spending a lot of my time with engaging posts out throughout the month. And then I really have one, on, one time of the month where I'm doing 
um, either lead up posts or my actual party. And a ton, a ton of people see my posts about my party because they're so engaged in my group already. So I just want to like reassure you that most of the time when people are not responding to you, it's not because they aren't interested. It's because they aren't seeing your posts anymore because um, there was a, a lack of engagement. So um, your Facebook group, like I really want to encourage you to, uh, here's your challenge is after you look at your Facebook profile and determined how many of those posts are lip sense related, go to your group and say, okay, which of these are solicitations and which are these things or things that customers would likely respond to. And if it is all lip sense posts, I want to challenge you to um, find something that you're interested in, like you need a new bottle of shampoo. Who's got recommendations on what kind of shampoo? Because I don't know, I never find shampoo that I love. Like some people like seem to love their shampoo. I'm like, I just end up buying whatever random craps at the drugstore. So I did have like an entire conversation about shampoo in my group. So I was like, I want to hear from somebody who actually loves their shampoo because I just end up buying what's on sale and like, I don't know, Tresemme doesn't do anything. And then Pantene doesn't do anything. They never seem to be doing anything different. So find something that you're actually interested in. And the thing about these posts is it really needs to be something that is useful, right? So nobody wants to spend time or a lot of people won't spend time talking about hypothetical situations. Um, I'm going on vacation this summer. Where is your favorite vacation spot is engaging. They want to give you advice on where to go. Um, tell me where your bucket list places are is less engaging because there's no purpose to that you're not going to that place. They're not going to that place. It's less purposeful. And so people really have limited time and they are constantly judging what they should spend their time doing. And people will not spend as much time on hypothetical questions. Um, but they will advise you and give you their opinion if they think it's actually going to be worthwhile. So that's actually why I never do those. Like, you know, they put up like an outfit and then they put like six lip sense color around it. Which lip sense color do you wear? That ain't my outfit not your outfit. No one's wearing that outfit. Like, why am I going to spend time telling you that I like brick? I'm not because there's just, it's pointless. And I think that people have been in enough Facebook groups and Facebook parties and everything to kind of become savvy about stuff like that. And like, they recognize that you're really just trying to get them to comment. And then the other problem with a post like that is once they say brick, you're like, there's nothing left. I mean, there's nothing left to say. There's no conversation there unless you want to argue with them. Well, I think it's cranberry. You know what I mean? Like there's no conversation to be had there, but there is conversation around seeking somebody's genuine opinion about something that will actually happen in your life or their life. So um, that's why I do the post that I do. I asked about miracle noodles once. I have bought some miracle noodles. They're basically no carb noodles. And that was a hilarious conversation. As a matter of fact, the reviews on that were so bad from so many people who had tried them that I threw them away when I got them and didn't even open them. Um, but like, it, but I was interested. I wanted to know, I was like, what are these noodles that they look good in the advertisement that don't have any carbs? Um, but they scared me the hell off from that. I didn't even try those, but that was a great conversation. And there was tons of engagement and because it was relevant, like I bought the noodles. They were, they were like, Oh my God, don't eat those. Um, and certainly don't let that be your only option for dinner that night. Like have a plan B if you decide to do this. And it was a great conversation. So those are the things that are going to drive your business forward in your, um, in your group and to create a group where people want to go. And here's the thing is you need to ask yourself a question. Do I think my VIP group is fun? Do I enjoy it? Do I enjoy creating these posts? Do I feel like it's the job? Is this rotten? Is this for me? If it bores you, it bores the hell out of your customers. So just keep that in mind. If you aren't, if you don't think your group is fun, if you don't enjoy your group, you can be assured that they don't. For sure, they do not enjoy it, okay? So go into your group, take a hard look at it. Don't feel bad if, you're do, if you like look at it and you're like, oh my God, I've done everything wrong. <laughs> that is so okay. I'm gonna tell you about how to revive these things in a few minutes after I kind of get through the definitions here. Um, but your Facebook group, I really think is a lot about sharing information and creating engagement and driving relationships, creating loyalty, creating that spot where if somebody sees LipSense on eBay for $22.50 and I have it for $25, 
they're going to pay $25 and buy it from me because they love me and they think that it's fun being in my group. And I have had customers, I had a customer message me and tell me she went to a vendor event and she had, um, she had gone to like some vendor fair or craft fair and they had lip since there. And she had bought a caramel apple because she had thought she had seen me wear cap caramel apple the day before. And she was like, I feel terrible. I cheated on you. I bought it. It was right there. I should have ordered it from you. And I feel bad. Like she messaged me and apologized because she cheated on me with a girl at a vendor event. Like that's the kind of loyalty you will drive in your group. If you create relationships and you share yourself and that you are really make it a fun place to be. Okay. So for me, the VIP group is where 99% of my focus is because that's where I create relationships. And this is a relationship business, period, bar none. You don't even have to have Facebook to make this happen. You can go out and create relationships with people out in the real world, at the grocery store, at your daycare, at mom's day out, wherever, at the mall. And those relationships will lead to you having sales. This is a relationship business. So for me, relationships come from Facebook groups and from my personal profile. A Facebook business page does not really create relationships. Um, you can be, you definitely should be doing kind of a 911 approach on your business page, but on your business page, it's probably going to be less of like a beauty group than it really is going to be nine posts about um, the product that is informational and one post that's like buy now and one post that's personal. So when you're doing like a straight up 911 for a business page, it's nine informational, one personal, one solicitation. Buy now, join my team, that kind of thing. So um, informational post on that is going to be maybe before and after photos of when I started using the acne line. Like my skin is amazing now and my skin was not amazing before. But I'm not going to say, and I have it for $190, click this link to buy. I'm just going to share information about it. If they want to buy it, they'll let me know, obviously. But you want to just make an informational post and only do the buy now, join my team, here's my link, that kind of stuff, 911. And then on your business page, that one personal post is kind of important. You do want people who join your business page to start to form that connection with you, to like you as a person, they'll want to do business with you more. So kind of sharing that one personal post out of your 911 on your business page is a good thing because it kind of helps people, you know, like you. They want to like you. They want to like people that they do business with. Um, so that's your business page. Business pages for me are a little bit lower priority. I actually probably don't spend as much time on mine as I should. I should probably like add that to my to-do list, make some content there. And I don't think it's something that you need to do right away when you start your business. But where I have found my Facebook page to be um, important for me is establishing credibility with people that I don't already know. So like Jess, my friend, she knows that I sell LipSense. She knows if she gives me money that I'm going to send her product in return. If I meet somebody at the grocery store or at a vendor event, um, if the first time they come to church, we don't know each other. If I give them my business card and they look up my business on Facebook and I have a Facebook business page, I have good reviews, I have some posts there, I have some content there, I have a shop now button, they can go to my Senna site, they can go to my, my website, it establishes credibility for them. If you are sending them to a VIP group and they are a stranger, most people really aren't going to want to join a VIP group to buy a product. You know what I mean? Like if you're interested in something this stranger has to sell, you probably just want to go online and buy it. Um, and if you don't have a sentence site, they're not going to be able to do that. But next best thing is for them to be able to go to a business page, see that you have a legitimate business, see that people like your business page, and then they may, you know, message you to order or whatever, um, however you take your orders. So having a Facebook business page is a really good tool to have in place when you are starting to reach outside of your immediate family and friends network. So I've sold my mom, my sister, my cousin, my pastor's wife and her daughter, and now I need to meet some new people. Those people are gonna respond well to you having a Facebook business page, even if they have to contact you directly to order. Um, it just establishes credibility for them. Also, Superhero Lips is my you know trademarked business name. It's a filed and official and all of that good stuff. Um, and when people search that on Google, if they Googled Superhero Lips, like it's memorable, so like say they lost my business card and they were like, oh, what is it? Superhero lips. If they Google superhero lips, my Facebook page comes up 
and my um, my web address comes up. So if you don't have a, a web, like a www.yourbusinessname.com, if you don't have that, you can have a Facebook business page, which you can create for free. And when people Google your business name, your Facebook business page will come up. So um, unless it's like duplicated 7,000 times and there's a hundred James Jazzy lips or whatever, that might be a little more complicated. But if you have a unique business name, that'll help you. Uh, okay, so that's business pages. Again, on the business pages, no one is going to see anything you post there unless they come out and look for you or you pay money to boost posts. Paying money to boost posts can be as cheap as $5 to reach several hundred people, or you can spend as much money on you want and reach thousands, hundreds of thousands, however many people that you can afford to reach. Here's my caveat with that. I have not cracked the code on effective sponsored ads. So I created some ads that I thought, ooh, this would be a good sponsored ad. And then I'll put like 20 bucks in it and I might get some likes, I might get some comments, but I have never actually seen any of that convert into a sale or a new distributor. I haven't figured that out yet. So while I have figured out how to create engaging posts, I haven't figured out how to convert those into actually something that makes me money. So I haven't done one of those in a really long time because my business is going fine without them. Um, if you crack the code on that and you get a lot of response on that, holler and let me know how that worked out. Um, but I actually don't spend a lot of money on boosting posts. The other thing is, is if you want to keep your business page like up to date so that when people look at it, it hasn't been six months since you posted last. I'm really bad about that. You like, you can go out and look at my business page. There hasn't been a post in a month because they forget. You can actually, when you post something to your, um, when you post something lip sense or sentence related to your uh, VIP group, you can just go put that same content on your VIP or on your business page. And the reason you can do that is that even if the same people like your business page and are in your group, they're probably not going to see what you posted on your business page because um, you didn't pay money to boost it. So you don't really have to worry about like, double dinging your customers. I was worried about that at first. Like, oh, if I post this in my group and then I go and post it on my business page, is the same person going to see it twice and be kind of annoyed that they're getting hit up two times by the same post? And the answer is no, they're just not seeing and really anything that's happening on my business page unless I boost it and pay for it. And anything that I pay for if it was that good, I'm probably going to post it in my VIP group anyways and hope they see it twice. Um, so I really only have paid to boost things that I thought were really good, solid ads. So, um, so that's your business page. Now, the last thing is events. Events for me are an invitation. They are handing somebody an envelope with an invitation that says, this is the date, this is the time, this is the location, there is something going down, and I'd like you to add it to your calendar and respond to me. An event is never a party for me. I never, ever put party posts in an event. It is really important, and I'm going to tell you why. There are people that do this. There are people that do direct sales, and they do their entire party in an event. Um, I don't like that for either my parties or when I'm doing launch or hostess parties. The reason I don't like it for my parties, for my VIP group, is that if you create an event and everybody in your VIP group is your um, invited, maybe 10 people are going to respond. Yes, that they're going for me. I may have 40 and like half of them are distributors. So 20 of them may be customers, 20 of them are distributors who want to see what I'm doing so they can copy it. I'd have no problem with that. Y'all are my people copy away. But that's not a problem for me. But if I have 40 people who say they're going to my event and then I post in that event, only the 40 people who said they're going are going to see my post. Okay. So the other 360 people in my group are definitely not going to see my post because they didn't RSVP going, okay? That's really, really important. So I use an event like an invitation. I'm inviting you to my event. I may post a little bit in there, you know, some teasers about the event because obviously those people are very interested. They're probably going to buy something from me, the 20. So I will post some little teasers in there because I know they're going to see those posts. Um, but when I do the actual party, it needs to be in the group because when you post in the group, more than those 20 people are going to see it. When you start your party, if you had 20 people RSVP to it, tag them in your first post. That's totally great. 
take your first post and share it into your event. Ladies, the party's going on now. It's in the group. Here's a link to the group and make sure they know where the party's going on. So you, you can get to those 20 people, but then you can get to all the other people in your group as well. And if you're crafting your party post in such a way where they decide, they drive engagement, like for me, I'm like, hey, these are the eyeshadows that I have. Tell me what your favorite eyeshadow color is for a chance to win um, a prize. And I have those kinds of little things, ask them to comment for a prize on like every single post in my party. And at the end of the party, there's one prize. There's not a prize per post. There's one prize for all of the comments. Well, remember when we talked about engagement and when you make a post and then people start commenting on it and Facebook says, oh, something interesting is happening up here. Then they start showing it to more people. Ah, they're going to show it to more people in your group. So, you know, maybe 10 people just commented on it. So they go show it to another 50 people and then 10 more people commented on it. So they show it to another 50 people. If you make that same post in your event, only 20 people can respond and nobody else is going to see it regardless of how many people have responded on that post. So that's why it's really important for you not to be doing your events in the Facebook event. It needs to be happening in your group. Now, I have seen people do hostess parties for other people in events. I don't like that either. One, for the same reason, only the people who are SVP are going to see your posts. But two, and here's the really important part of it, I convert my party hostesses to distributors almost exclusively. Like I, I'm, I don't remember the last time I hosted a party where the girl didn't sign up. So I don't want to put all those people in an event because if I do that, then we have to start a group. Everybody who ordered, we have to move over. All these other people who said they weren't going to the party, like, do we add them to the group? Do we not add them to the group? They didn't show any interest in the party. What do we do now? So I always, always, always start a group for all of my parties because my goal is to convert that person to a distributor and then there's no extra work there. She's got a business group with a bow on it, ready to go. Like, I don't want to put all those people in an event and then try to convert them over to a group if she signs up. So I find that very important. I don't use events to do party posts. I use events like to hand somebody an invitation and that is it. Um, so let's talk about, I have talked so much. I'm so sorry. It's 147. I want to talk about what happens if you've got a dead group. It happens all the time. I have had a dead group before where it was like, nothing is happening in here. Nobody's commenting on anything. I mean, it just happens. So if you have a dead group and nobody is responding to you, first of all, you're going to have to go back through and figure out, are you creating things that actually elicit engagement? Like, are these things that people want to comment on? Go back through and look at what works and what doesn't, and you need to create some engaging posts, but nobody's going to see it. If you create an engaging post and post it in your group, just like that, you need to tag some people. So tag your mom, your sister, your BFF, your cousin, you know, these girls that you know don't mind, they don't care, they're going to come and they're going to, um, they're going to comment on it. Like just tag your homegirls, like your, your good ones that you know are not going to get annoyed with you. Tag them in the post, create something engaging, ask them about the miracle noodles or whatever, and then tag your close girlfriends. You can even send them a message like, hey girl, I need to revive my business group. I'm working really hard, but I think a lot of people aren't seeing my posts. I'm going to tag you in something. Can you help me by commenting on it? They're going to say yes. They love you. Or don't invite them to the family barbecue next time, whatever. But like get them to comment on your stuff, tag them in your stuff. And then like when you post about charcoal whitening toothpaste and you know you have three dental hygienists in your group, tag your dental hygienist friends in it. If you ask about Botox, maybe don't tag people in that one because you don't want to call them out on Botox unless they've said they've had Botox. So just be like cognizant of what you're posting and what you're calling people out on. But if you're posting about something, you know, somebody's gonna have an opinion on like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing the Atkins diet. And you know, you have fitness freaks in your group, tag your fitness freaks. They will tell you all the things. So that's what I'm saying is like, Tag people and they will start commenting. And as they start commenting, Facebook is going to show your post to more people. So even the ones who didn't tag are going to see it and are going to comment. I have people come out of the woodwork sometimes. I, I, I keep talking about the Botox post. The Botox post was crazy. That thing ended up with a bunch of comments. 
people that I had never commented or liked on anything ever, ever commented on that post. People who never commented again commented on that post. I don't even know these names and they commented on this post. So um, if your group is totally DOA, it is so fine. Again, don't take it personally. It happens to everybody. But you need to create some engaging content. You need to tag some people in it or else nobody's going to see it still. And you probably want to message some of your really close girlfriends, maybe even some other distributors and ask them to comment on your post just to kind of get things rolling again. And then once things are rolling, you won't need to tag all those people once your natural engagement scores build up. But it may take you a few weeks. It may take you a month. It, it does take some persistence if you have a dead group to prove to Facebook that your content is interesting and that people want to see it. Um, so you can definitely do that. You can also do that on your personal profile. So if you go back to your personal profile and you're like, I made 20 posts and not a single one of them has a comment besides my mom. Oops, <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry. You can revive that the same way with creating engaging posts and tagging some people in them. Um, that's totally fine too. Your sister, your mom, your aunt, your cousin that you haven't talked to in a while, ask their opinion on something. Hey girl, I haven't seen you. Um, <clears throat> and help become relevant again. Like I said, you can go ahead and like message people on Messenger and just start a conversation with them and you'll start seeing each other's posts again. Go through your friends list, click on your buddies that you haven't seen in a while, go comment on some of their posts, go like some of their posts. Um, just very natural, like just people you want to interact with and have a relationship with, go find them and, and rekindle that relationship with them through Facebook. And you can revive your personal page and your VIP group the same way. Um, let's see, I have a chat question. So I have a new customer and she bought a starter kit and an extra color. She has a list with 22 more colors she wants to buy one a month that I've talked to her about joining and she's not fighting. Um, well, so if she really only wants to do one a month, it may not really be worth it for her to sign up, especially if there's not a great chance she can sign on and buy what she wants to order right now. Like, so if she really only wants one color, I might I'm probably going to baby step that person. Okay, girl, I'm going to set a reminder in my phone to contact her in like three weeks and ask her what color she wants that men. And once she's probably gotten, I don't know, five or six, I might sit down and see like, hey, girl, you spent $125 on these. If you paid $55, you could have spent X amount of dollars. Like, and maybe just check in with her every once in a while. But if she's really thinking like one a month, um, I might just keep her as a great customer. Um, once you start, oh, oh, oh but here, <laughs> so I'm tricky. So once you start sending her this one color a month, send her samples of skincare stuff, fragrances, beauty books, acclaim magazines, like just put a little extra goodies and things in there for her. Because if you can get her started on skincare, everybody signs up when they get on skincare. <laughs> <laughs> they have to because they can get 300 PV out of a single order. So yeah, you can definitely, if you can, I, I would actually probably focus on just trying to get her interested in things outside of lip sense or cosmetics line, maybe pop a tester in of a color you think that would be the right foundation color for her and um, those kinds of things and try to help her um, start enjoying the rest of the line. Sorry, my mom's Dawson's in here and he's really evil and tries to take things out of the garbage can. Um, I just making sure he's like not tearing at my garbage right now. Um, but try to get her into more of the line. If, if somebody really only likes lip scents and they only want one product a month, I'm like, ah, I may not be able to get them to sign up, but once they start liking the other cosmetics, um, and, and sending them little samples and testers is a nice subtle way to do that. And then they feel kind of like extra loved because even, okay, you know, when you buy stuff from like Sephora or Ulta and you get to pick your little samples and they send you all little stuff, like, like that stuff is fun. It just feels like added value. And I love that. So um, they will love getting those things from you and it'll help build loyalty with your customer as well. Um, any other questions? I was not expecting to talk for a full hour on personal page versus group versus business page versus event, but I managed to do it, didn't I? It's an interesting topic. Once you really understand kind of how they work and what different purposes they're used for, it will become second nature. In the beginning, I was really confused by all of it. And I noticed a lot of new distributors really don't understand how to use those different tools. And then all of a sudden they will have a party flop. And I'm like, what happened? Add me to it. And they're like, no, here, I'll invite you. It's a Facebook event. And I'm like, 
oh, wah, wah, only five people said they were coming, so only five people saw your post, but you wanted to sell 10 collections and you couldn't because 10 people weren't seeing your posts. So, and it's just like, and, and it's like those little things, like they did everything right. They did great posts. They did a contest. They did a giveaway. Like they did things. They did all the things. And it was like, because they just used an event instead of a group, hosed them. <laughs> so it's really hard at first. And I did it. And the only reason I know all this is because I've done it all wrong. So if you've done it all wrong, don't feel bad. So did I. A bunch. All right. All right, well, we're gonna close about five minutes early. Uh, big love to Azure, Blair, Leslie, and Leslie for showing up today. I will post the recording of this if you need to watch it back or um, if you wanna share it with your downlines, reflines, or whoever. So I will post it in the comments of the reminder post and then maybe even make a, a separate post so it gets bumped to the top of the group. And I will talk to y'all again. I think I'm gonna go um, Thursday, and I can't remember what topic it's on, but I'll be here Thursday for our meeting as well. Bye, guys.